You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Radio Public, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for November 29th, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we have so much to be thankful for. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hi, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Hey, everybody. How? I hope you're all doing really well. Um, I should probably start the show by letting everyone know that my mom did, in fact, pass away on Sunday. And one of these days, we'll all get together and I'll buy you all a beer and I'll tell you all about her and you will be amazed. And you'll go, of course, you're that guy. Uh, What I can say is whatever I have in me that is on fire about injustice in the world and whatever skills I might have as a teacher or communicator, I got from her. Uh, Long before, nevertheless, she persisted, became a meme. That was my mom. Uh, She once told me when she was a little girl. When Roosevelt died, she had no idea who the president was going to be because Roosevelt had always been the president. Um, (laughs) She lived uh, a life as an adventure, and she died with grace and dignity. And I loved her very much, and I miss her like crazy. And that's all I'll say for now. Yeah, we'll we'll miss her. She was uh, always so, so good to me and to the kids. And uh, she was just Grandma Shirley. Yeah. And uh, I, I... my fondest memory of her has to do with how proud she was of you having a family. She yes, just yes. loved that you were a, de- a stepdad and she loved that you were in a home with kids and cats and seeing you that way, uh, I think made her life uh, better. Yeah. She just felt much relieved that you had someone looking out for you and uh, that uh, it all worked out uh for you very well and she was very proud yeah. <laughs> she was always very proud of you and proud of us so well the last um, the last I, I was on the phone with her um the the day before she died and uh-huh. the last thing i really did tell her was not to worry uh that she was free to go wherever she needed to go because i was in good hands yeah. i had a, a, a great woman looking after me i had a great family um everything would be fine and she needn't worry about me one little bit so yep and she said same back at you same back at you. So, yeah, that's yeah, and and we said this last week. We're so grateful for hospice care workers, yes, and they were amazing. Uh, amazing for your sis for your sister carrying a lot of the burden uh, of caretaking at the end too. So, love to her and to your brother and other rest of your family, and yeah. uh, and uh, she would want us to just go on yeah. and keep fighting the good fight keep because persisting. that's what she was about. Well, and yep. so so this week. Uh, considering the events in my life and the day that it is, which is the day after Thanksgiving, we're going to focus on what we're grateful for and how important it is to value what you have while you have it, uh, especially when the wolf is at the door, especially when times exactly. get really mean and scary. Uh, it's really important to remember how good you might have it relative to how it could be. And it's important mm-hmm. to keep in mind a vision of the future. It's, it, you know, it's really easy to get mired down in trench warfare, make it through the mm-hmm. next day. Uh, but, you know, one of the great good joys of watching Bill Clinton when he came back to um, uh, a fair, a, a bio fair, uh, a trade fair that I went to in Chicago, uh, mm-hmm. was just remembering in the middle of the Bush administration, what was what was it like to have a smart president? Yeah. Uh, whether you agreed with him or yep. not, whether you loved him or not, um, having this very intelligent man stand up for an hour and talk without notes was such a blast of pure oxygen during the mm-hmm. dumb presidency of George Bush. And yeah. it's, it's, it was like, Oh yeah, I remember that. And people are now sending around um, pictures of, of Barack Obama who, again, mm-hmm. you can be pissed at him or not for, for weighing in or not, or whatever his opinion is. I, I don't really care. What I care about right. is a reminder that, Oh, this, this, this is a decent, humane, nice guy who tried really hard to the best of his ability to be a good president during a terrible time and Mm -hmm. who loves his family, who loves his wife, who's great with kids and just this kind of, Oh, that's right. I remember that. And it's important to keep in mind that that's 
that's what we should be. That that sort of leadership is what we should have. You and I can fight about policies all you want, but you can't you can't argue the fact that the cruelty and sadism and stupidity and stupidity full <laughs> ignorance, the sort of joyful sadism of the Trump and the Republican Party has got to go. And then we'll argue mm-hmm. over what the future looks like. But you got to hold in mind a vision of what the future could be, or you lose sight of, of what's really important. So this week, all the usuals are on our thank you list, our family, our friends, our relative good health. Um, we have roofs over our heads. Uh, you and I have each other. And we sure do. Awful yeah. lot to be thankful for in that universe. So and uh, you're grateful for for some good guys out there in the media who are who are fighting a good fight along with you, right? I am very grateful for people like Jay Rosen, yeah, and Norman Ornstein. Um, I, I spend yeah. a lot of my time inveighing against people who I think are uh, who have way too much oxygen and way too big a platform, and wondering why or why these people have microphones, especially today. Now that David Brooks is top trending on Twitter, unbelievable. I will let you all figure out. Suffice it to say, David Brooks apparently is unfamiliar with Richard Nixon, Ronald Reagan, uh, George Bush, John Kennedy, uh, Donald Trump, Trump <laughs> uh, Barack Obama, uh, because no one yeah. from a, an urban center can really understand the country. Um, like, uh-huh. okay, and get elected oh, president. It's just, it's just impossible. <laughs> David Brooks is currently wearing his, you know, his um, three thousand dollar Armani bib overalls. Um, trying to rub elbows with the common folk, uh, his 20 mm-hmm. states and 20 days tour that, you know, this is the lost in America, um, Albert Brooks touching Indians. You know, he wants to, he wants to get out in his big RV and touch Indians and be in touch with America. He's not staying at a motel no. six and no, and, no, and just, he's taking, he's taking an Uber and, and worrying about the smell getting on his yeah. suit. And going to a diner for forty five minutes, and then he le- he knows the and area. This is, this, yeah. is th- this has the stink, as almost everyone in the media does, of someone who didn't do the homework for the last thirty mm-hmm. years, who had no yeah. idea the Republican Party he was pimping for for his entire adult life simply doesn't exist. And David Brooks got caught along with pretty much everyone else in the media pretending this imaginary Republican Party was what the party was, and now he's like, oh shit, oh shit. Well, I can't admit liberals are right. I can't admit Driftglass was right about me for the last 15 years. So what I have to do is quickly run across a whole bunch of states, talk for a hot minute with a bunch of people in diners, and then pretend I know all about what rural America, what real Americans really want. So that let's get back yeah, to our gratitude. Exactly. List, I go down to the cul-de-sac <laughs> and, and I, I let me come back to uh, Jay Rose and Norm Weinstein and occasional bursts of rebellion from people like Chris Hayes. I'm grateful for Rachel, too. I don't want to I want to say it. I'm grateful for Rachel and and Lawrence, you know, and that's that. it's it's important to note those people because it's easy to forget sometimes that, as Frederick Douglass said, power concedes nothing without a demand. It never did and it never will. Regime change never begins at the top, ever. So every time you're watching cable news or you open a newspaper, remember you are only seeing what some wealthy and incredibly power corporation wants you to see. So the same corporation that puts Rachel Maddow on the air, and we're all grateful for that, also killed their own Harvey Weinstein story and keeps mm-hmm. Chuck Todd in charge of Meet the Press and always finds a place at the table for people like Matt Schlapp and Hugh Hewitt. And the newspaper, the New York Times, that continues to break really important stories about the Trump administration is the same newspaper that obsessively reported on Hillary Clinton's emails month after month after month and thinks it's vitally important that Brett Stevens and Barry Weiss and David Brooks have a national media platform. So it's really important to remember the rest of the Frederick Douglass quote, which I will now read to you because I don't have it committed to memory. It is, find out just what any people will quietly submit to and you have found out the exact measure of injustice and wrong which can be imposed upon them. And these will continue until they are resisted either wor- with either words or blows or both. The limits of tyranny are prescribed by the endurance of those whom they oppress. Mm-hmm. The people you see in the media who are actually beginning to adopt, this is the next thing we're grateful for, that our both sides don't philosophy is really taken hold in the grassroots. Yes, it has. It, it really, yeah. I mean, I'm, I, you know, this is the guy who coined uh, dumpster fire talking to you now. So <laughs> trust me when I say 
Um, and th- we didn't originate this, but we've been really consistent and persistent about this when it really wasn't popular to say these things. And now seeing that they're, it's everywhere. Anyone who tries to pull this shit uh, will continue to have a job. The New York Times is not going to fire David Brooks. And Ron Fournier is going to continue to get work. But um, when this stuff pops up on Twitter, I'm usually the 50th person to show up and say, this both sides bullshit has got to stop. And mm-hmm. I'm very grateful for that. So when and you a lot see of people pe- check you on those things, where's the class when we need him? Where sure. I read this morning, right, right. And, and there's a, an enormous amount of respect I have for people who work in the media, who are um, susceptible to or might suffer from. And Norm Ornstein suffered materially from Absolutely. saying things that he was not supposed to say. He he, he and, and and Tom Mann were suffered materially. I mean, they, they had money taken out we of their pocket. Black ball, black <laughs> they were blackballed from the, the Sunday saying, shows. Absolutely. Yeah. In 2013, I believe it was, both sides don't. Yep. This, the problem with the country is actually the Republican Party. The Republican Party. Party is the problem. Yeah. And this was the most popular column they ever wrote. The most emailed well, everyone column ever read wrote. it and no one talked about it and, on television. And because... no one talked. About it. And so there is, uh, instead of dwelling on, as I'm sure I will for the next, you know, however many years, that, oh my God, Chuck Todd did something stupid. Or, oh my God, what the fuck is Matt Schlapp doing on television? Why, Ari Melber, why do you keep putting this asshole on the air? The real focus needs to be the men and women who run the corporations that hire Chuck Todd. Mm-hmm. and permit him to do shit like this they have an agenda that is business-based profit-based um has nothing to do with freedom has nothing to do with democracy has nothing to do with our good nothing to do with journalism that's for sure and it doesn't have people, anything to do with the general welfare or informing the public either no. yeah and saying you know shrugging your shoulders and saying well money well ratings that no you have to go further than that you have to find out Who exactly is putting a knife to their throat and saying, if you don't, if you start talking honestly about the Republican Party, we will destroy you? Because that's what happened when NBC decided to cover up the Harvey Weinstein story. They got threats from Weinstein um, about what he knew about their people. And that's why they black bagged that story. It was an actual case of corporate blackmail. So it's not sufficient to say, well, this, these sort of things happen. No, no, no. There are actual motives at play here that that people who work in the industry refuse to talk about. That many have to know about it. I guarantee you, Chuck Todd knows why his boss tells him what to do and why he gets a spanking every time he strays off the reservation. But we don't know. And that look of terror you see going across people's faces in the in the media when this subject comes up is ample evidence that there is an agenda at play here, a conspiracy at play here which they're very determined not to share with the rest of us. So when Norm Ornstein or Chris Hayes or Jay Rosen, uh, people who are adjacent to the media or who are deeply interested in, in, uh, in a uh, academic sense and in a, in a real sense, real world sense, weigh in consistently and really dig in um, and, and, and refuse to let go. I have a lot of respect for them because they're putting much more at risk than we are. Cause we're just a, you know, little old podcast in the middle of middle America. So um, we're very grateful for those signs of professional pride and pride in the, in the profession of journalism and honesty from people who have a much bigger voice in the world than we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're very grateful for the absolute ineptitude of our enemies, uh, particularly people like Devin Nunez. Uh, <laughs> Yes, they are, yep. as you wrote, yes, they are cruel and racist and awful, but they are also exceedingly stupid. As Voltaire said, I never made but one prayer to God, a very short one. Oh, Lord, make my enemies ridiculous. And God granted it. Let me put it this way. It's small comfort, but it is comfort. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. If, you, if you need a ridiculous moment today, go watch Donald Trump for 30 seconds talk about space. It's the stupidest moment of the day that I've seen so far. Well, I, I'm comforted by the fact that the cruel, racist, awful depraved Republican Party is not led by Tom Cotton. Yeah, yeah. It's led by a boob named Donald Trump who who, who trips over his own dick every single day. It's not run by Tom giant... Cotton yet. <laughs> right, right. That's the point. Tom the point Cotton is... may come into the bombed out shell of a Republican Party that Donald Trump leaves behind and with the help right. of a complicit media, take over. 
I have no doubt that he will try yeah. and people like him will try and there will be a giant bulldozer um, firing its engines the minute Donald Trump is out of office. Oh, yeah. Waiting to, to pave it over. All pave of it down. over. Yep. Let's let's bring Hugh Hewitt back into the mix. Hugh, what do you think happened? Well, you know, I think the extremes on both sides. Yeah. And and, and, and you've got but, that from the uh, Mitch McConnell today saying the real problem is lack of civility. You know, yeah. we got to disagree without being disagreeable. How about f- you? <laughs> Mitch McConnell, who's on the cover of Whole Foods magazine. Whole Foods magazine. Reason. Yeah. Well, you know, here's the problem. I think he was scheduled to be on this on the cover of Whole Frauds magazine. Whole Frauds. <laughs> uh, it, it somehow that got all mixed up, and he ended up um, scaring people who digest food away from the Whole Foods company because, oh my God, Mitch McConnell. Um, so there will come a day very soon when there will be a massive effort already underway to pretend you know the lifeboats are already in the water, right. pretend none of this happened, that the reasonable Republicans are coming to the rescue, and that if only the left hadn't pushed so hard. If the only people hadn't insisted on things like, oh, I don't know, health care and a living wage and a decent environment and not having kids in cages. If only the left hadn't insisted on those things and pot and yeah. raising taxes on rich people. Rich then, people, yeah, right. You know, really, it really is both sides. That th- you and I and everyone we know and all our heroes in the media need to remain laser focused on that group of people well and i'm gonna break one... my own rule and say we will talk about in a minute which i always hate that we do that because then uh-huh. we don't get to something we are going to talk about partisan impeachment in a moment absolutely um, we want to talk say one last thing we are grateful for you guys our listener i know yeah. we said this last week but we have a community of activists uh listening to this podcast and they are uh widely dispersed but uh, and it's a small group of people. We uh, are grateful to all, each and every individual one of you, uh, and you guys are so supportive of us. And so, thank you for that. Deeply, deeply yeah. appreciate it. Really and truly. Um, we'd also like to thank our podcast staff. Um, these are the men and women behind the scenes who work all week long to bring you the best goddamn liberal podcast in the Midwest. Uh, of course, uh, there's Tammy, who was our angel nerd who built us a beautiful website and handles most of the distribution across social media and YouTube and so forth. But there's also our research staff who are blue gal and drift class and our sound recorder who is blue gal and our script supervisor, of course, who is drift class, our sound editor who's blue gal, our correspondence manager who is blue gal, our marketing director who is, uh, you might know her as blue gal. Um, (laughs) Our graphic arts team. We have a mighty good graphic arts team of drift glass and blue gal. Uh, we have our controversy instigator, which is very important for the marketing side of things. That would be Drift Glass. Our fake sponsor liaison, who is also this guy named Drift Glass. Our travel and appearance bookers, who are Drift Glass and Blue Gal, and usually consists of, hey, let's go to the coffee shop and talk about the podcast. <laughs> um, our accounting department, which is Blue Gal, for which I'm eternally grateful. Our board president, which is Blue Gal. Our CEO, which is Drift Glass. Uh, We have snark contributors, which include Junior Dude and Middle Child and Youngest Child. And all three cats have now been given associate producer credits to shut them the hell up. Yeah. And uh, hint, hint, we just said three cats. Yes. Yes. Ooh, Ooh, foreshadowing. 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 Big news. Big news. All right. Uh, And uh, we want to thank the millions of people we will never meet who organized enough communities, knocked on enough doors, and registered enough voters to make the 2018 election the highest midterm turnout in four decades. 53% of the citizen voting age population voted in 2018. By comparison, 2014, the last midterm election, turnout was 36.4%, which was the lowest since 1942. So Mm -hmm. we turned that around and that turned the house around and uh, we're going to turn this country around next time. And when Democrats organize and vote, we win. Yep. We have the numbers. It, it's no doubt about it. And de- demographically, the Republican Party is doomed. So just have to stop people from telling you that your vote doesn't count or it's the corrupt duopoly or nothing ever changes or there's not a dimes with a difference. Those people are not your friends. Don't get in the van with those people. Don't don't take their candy. They're not there to help you. So – um now that we've said what we're grateful for, I want to talk about what we're not grateful for for a ah. moment. Because this week, uh, there there was a wonderful podcast. I'm not sure what these guys are doing right anymore, but Liberal Oasis used to be one of my favorite podcasts. 
And uh, they had a feature called the Stabby Five, which is five yeah. things that made their female co-host stabby. And so I have a Stabby Three today, things that just are ir- irking me no end uh, this week in media and politics. Um, and the f- I'm, I'm going to mix up the order a little bit, Drift Glass. Uh, the first one is Billionaires Against Warren. Uh-huh particularly Donnie Deutsch, who came out and said, you know, I, she's not likable. High school principal uh, vibe from her. I don't like her. She's not likable. And he was called out on the air for that, uh, for that sexism. But um, I really think that Donnie Deutsch is happy to take the L and be called a sexist. Uh, as long as we don't talk about his big pharma stocks and his insurance stocks and how it's going, the wealth tax is going to affect him personally. Uh, and there, this is going on with Bloomberg entering the race. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a very good article at No More Mr. Nice blog yes. called I love that. Uh, Elizabeth Warren Didn't Fall, She Was Pushed. Mm-hmm. And this is happening with Brian Williams and a whole lot of other very rich on-air talent uh, deciding for us that Elizabeth Warren's ideas are no good. Right. They're just not, they're, you know, they're just not good, Blue Cow. They're just not. We can't, we can't pay for this. We're taking away stuff from people. We're doing this at the end. And that's all bullshit. She's not afraid of no. this. And uh, so I am not endorsing Elizabeth Warren. I like Kamala Harris. I like a lot of other candidates. Uh, many of you know, Junior Dude is working for Warren in Iowa. So uh, he's been knocking on doors for her. Uh as a as a volunteer so far he's hoping to get an internship at some point but um the deal is that uh pushing her out pushing her message and and it's bernie sanders message too uh out of the mainstream is what they're doing and they're doing it very consciously uh and uh they deserve to be defeated at the polls yeah. <laughs> that i will say <laughs> um and then do you want to talk about Devin Nunez and his suing CNN? Oh, no. No, you go right ahead. You're, you're on a roll, Blue Gal. Devin Nunez decided he was going to sue CNN and Daily Beast, mm-hmm. and uh, he's going to track them down if they don't show up in court. I'm going to sue the media. Sean. Yeah. Sean. Good luck with that, Devin. And I'm, I'm assuming that he is using the Diamond and Silk legal team yeah. uh, in order to sue the the. Uh, First Amendment protected media yeah, for for speaking the truth about him, yeah, for speaking the truth about him, or even suggesting allegations that are out there about him. Uh, I'm sure it is harming his brand, but uh... no, not really. <laughs> not, not really. really. Has, the people who are willing to let Devin Nunez take a dump in their skull every day, he has plenty of opportunity to go on Sean Hannity yeah. for a no content interview where yeah. he gets to say whatever he wants. And uh, Maria Bartiromo asked him point blank a yes or no question. Did you meet with the prosecutor in Ukraine? And he wouldn't answer her question. No. Because because the corrupt the media is 90 percent corrupt, you know. So I'd love to come on your show and answer your question. But right now it's a it's a criminal matter. Right. What you know, because it's it's a crime to report that this happened and there's going to be phone records and travel records and so forth. Now. Chris Hayes is right. A congressman, especially a chairman of the Intelligence Com- Committee, which Nunez was from 2016 to 2018, that that term of Congress, he was and, you know, ran to the White House with whatever information he ran to the White House with. He is allowed to travel internationally and he's allowed to uh, talk to world leaders and so forth. Yeah. But to then lie about it and cover it up and also sit through an impeachment inquiry where all of these things are being discussed and not mentioned once that he had done this uh, is uh, pretty much cover up. That's what I call well, it. And, and he's so bad at it. And he's um, so bad at he's it. So, I mean, <laughs> you, you brush lightly up against him with anything that looks like a fact. And he turns into uh, Martin Short, Nathan Thurm from SNL. Yep. No, maybe you were in the Ukraine. Huh? Maybe you were there. Maybe it's you who, uh, and he just starts sweating and acting like, the guiltiest idiot in America, which he is. And that is hilarious um, when you see someone on public transportation do it. It is less hilarious yes. when the ranking member of a very important committee who is uh, who's in charge of essentially marshalling the Republicans' cover-up of Donald Trump's treason doing it. Again, 
we are thankful for the fact that these people are idiots and are, and suck at being cover up people and suck at lying who just fall apart under the slightest breeze. Uh, but he, you know, he is there still. And until the good people of his district decide they've had enough of America laughing at them for electing a buffoon like this, he's going to stay there. And finally, the thing that's making me especially stabby and, and all of these fall under a theme you might have noticed. I have noticed this idea that uh, the impeachment or the move to impeach Donald Trump is somehow a partisan impeachment. Yes. It's actually the resistance to impeaching Trump that is a partisan yes. move. Yes, yes. And uh, Republicans have decided to ignore the evidence of their own eyes and ears for partisan ends. Right. And so it's time to flip that on its head. And, and unfortunately, we have people like Brian Williams saying, well, Nancy Pelosi said that Partisan, bipartisanship was one of her standards for having impeachment, and she's not. She is not meeting that standard. Shame on her. Not, not <laughs> because it's Democrats' jobs to convince Republicans to behave like decent human beings and to behave like logical human beings that actually pay attention to the evidence of their own eyes and ears. And once again, every time you see disgraced former um, nightly news anchor Brian Williams. Uh, scraping together a paycheck uh, during the 11th hour, yeah. putting up a bunch of Republicans and centrists and asking them, why won't Democrats lead? Why are Democrats yeah. failing? Look at all yeah. this flailing going on. That he is a meat and bone manifestation of Comcast MSNBC corporate policy. Yep. And he's paid they very put, handsomely to be that. Yeah. Yep. And they would put, there are a million other people, not a million, there's a thousand other people who could do a very good job of not being a centrist corporate stooge. Um, and they chose to, the centrist corporate stooge and they give him a blank check to put on idiots on the air and, and centrists on the air and both siders on the air to continue this ridiculous narrative that somehow it's both sides. It is no more partisan than the final defense of the Fuhrer bunker in Berlin was partisan. Right. And right. all the lunatics are in the bunker and they're all pretending that super weapons will save us or, or, or army group Steiner will come together and save us. And everyone's starting to figure out that no, no, that's going to happen. Yeah. And you can hear the um, thump of, of Russian <laughs> uh, artillery outside yeah. your window. And at that moment, Brian Williams pops up and says, Hey, 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 this is so partisan. Why can't both sides just agree? And and that's the problem. It's the people like that who step into the middle of what should be a clear black and white issue and turn it into, by virtue of the fact, n Brian Williams has no facts at his command. He has a microphone and a camera. And the reason he has a microphone and a camera is because Andy Lack gave him one. And there's no other reason that he's on the air other than to promote some agenda that the corporation that owns MSNBC thinks is important. And you can deduce what that agenda must be by the persistence of a number of people who tow this absurd line uh, are given a, a seat at the table. So that's my only warning. That's why we, we, we want to salute and, and raise up and valorize people who, who risk their career Um and risk their standing among their, their fellow reporters and journalists by saying, no, this is wrong. This is just wrong. Well, and I'm very one grateful if we can add one more person that I'm grateful sure. for, uh, who has sure. found his place in the ecosphere of politics all of a sudden. And I'm very grateful he has. Eric Swalwell. Yeah, yeah. Has, first of all, he, he read into the record the Daily Beast article about he... Nunez going to Ukraine. Why isn't he running for president? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was. That was perfectly within his right to sure. do so. You know, without objection, sure, we're going to put all of this stuff in the, the record. Uh, and now on Twitter, he just called out John Kennedy uh, this week and said, you know, you're repeating Russian propaganda. Mm -hmm. why, do, why are you doing that? And actually, John Kennedy flipped, and now he's repeating other conspiracy theories sure. instead. Sure. But... Uh, you know, this this is a peer. This is a congressman who, from his position, can can actually troll people yes. uh, in a way that he's not doing anything but calling them out for their behavior, yes. for what they are actually doing. 
And uh, but being the guy who does that uh, from his safe district in California, I think is fantastic. I'm very proud of him. Uh, he's doing the Lord's work doing that. And so one other to the list. And I, 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 I've sort of had a lot on my mind today. So when I put my list together. No kidding. By the way, Drift Class is leaving uh, for Arizona Saturday yeah. morning. Give Keep him in your thoughts. He's got oh, dark 30. paperwork and uh, ashes and things to deal with uh, out in Arizona. If you see a 6'8 guy folded up triple in the back of a plane at oh, dark 30 on Saturday morning, <laughs> have a little prayer for me. Because plane travel, special pleading, I realize, is incredibly painful for me, physically painful, because I'm really, really tall. I'm 6'8", and I just don't fit. And unless I get in... I wasn't able to do it this time, get into the front five or six people. There's no seat on the yeah. plane where I don't exit the plane with my legs asleep or in pain. And then yeah. it's a three and a half yeah. hour shuttle trip to where I got to go. Um, all of which is necessary and all of which is, you know, I, I, I thank God for the internal combustion engine that that right. makes it possible for me to do this. So I'm, I'm grateful for the ability to do this, but it's a, it's a long trip. I envy my brother. He, he can hop on a shuttle in Denver and land at the Prescott airport, thus saving him. And, and he's, he's there. there. He's, he's right there. Um, I do want to add one more person to our list and that's Soledad O'Brien. Oh yeah. Who just brings the heat every day yes, and she brings does. the heat with a huge number of followers and a reputation uh, a deserved, richly deserved reputation in the media for being a, a, a tough, fair journalist. And so um, our hats off to her and I'm very thankful that she's in there on our team uh, bringing the heat every day. And let's do an abbreviated uh, news roundup. Yeah. Okay. After you. Ken Cuccinelli was forced to leave a Thanksgiving Eve bash at a bar after Martin O'Malley publicly shamed him for putting immigrant kids in cages. Way to go, yeah. Martin O'Malley. Yeah. Uh, Apple, you know that company, has complied with Russian demands to show Crimea as part of Russian territories on its apps when viewed from inside Russia. Apple has yet to comply with our demands to show Cupertino, California as part of Russian territory, too. <laughs> uh, Michael Bloomberg has decided to fight it out with Joe Biden for the reefers and jazz music are going to ruin the youth vote. Good luck with that. Uh, actually, Joe Biden uh, pulled back from his position that pot is a gateway drug uh, this uh -huh. week. But uh, Michael Bloomberg, is that's a weird situation because... When he was mayor of New York, he effectively decriminalized possession of personal use marijuana. Um, yeah. he, he made it so that you got a ticket instead of spending the night in jail uh, as mayor. He did that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, now he's saying stupidest idea ever to make pot legal. How dare they? Well, he's as a uh, source. <laughs> you said a source close to the professional left podcast. I think we can say it's junior dude. Yeah. I said, you know, I wasn't going to vote for him anyway. Yeah. So, <laughs> I think no. a whole lot of millennials are feeling exactly the same way. Yeah. Uh, no, we weren't even going to go there anyway. Not That's even not interested. Happened. Yes. <laughs> um, just FYI, Donald Trump was in fact briefed about the whistleblower complaint before lifting the hold on the military to Ukraine in September. He knew about it. The reason he lifted the goddamn hold, the reason he stopped it, trying to extort them was because he got busted. Meanwhile, his fixer, Rudy Giuliani, was negotiating personal business with Ukraine's top prosecutor while encouraging the same prosecutor to investigate the Bidens and allegations that Ukraine, not Russia, had interfered in the 2016 election, which now everyone knows, except Donald Trump, is a Russian-based propaganda campaign that the Republican Party is holding on to because they got nothing else. And hey, guess what? According to the Justice Department's Inspector General, the FBI never placed undercover agents or informants inside Trump's 2016 campaign. Yeah. They were not spying on him. No, according to their own Justice Department Inspector General. Now, will that stop Crazy Uncle Liberty from believing that? Of course not, because that will never appear on Fox News. Uh, the Trump administration has moved to substantially cut its contribution to NATO's collective budget, which, while it's not a huge amount, it makes clear that Donald Trump is is committed to wrecking NATO in the same way he is wrecking our Asian alliances, international trade agreements, international environmental agreements, the U.S. EPA, the American State Department, the American judiciary, and anything else he can get his tiny, tiny hands on. And uh, you have a very good post up this week about uh, the apology tour of the last president. Yes. The last Democratic president who had to clean up Republican messes, and it's uh -huh. nothing compared to what 
yeah. we're going to have to do to fix what Trump is breaking right now. And it's nothing compared to the what Fox News is going to make of the next Democratic president trying to mend what Donald Trump has destroyed, oh. because they will never acknowledge that Donald Trump destroyed or they were any part of it. No, it'll be the hugest tax increase in the history of America. Yeah. That's what. It, all right. I'm grateful for you and big hugs to you. You too, Good sweetie. Class. You Love too. you very much. Love you very much. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is Bosco. And Bosco is full name Bosco Longmire. Uh, Longmire was a last name that Grandma Shirley used in social media. That was sort of her anonymous. Her, her <laughs> right? Her I mean, nom, was, everybody knew it, but what the hell? Nom de plume, yeah. yes. Nom de guerre. Bosco, yeah. Bosco came to live with us this week. And uh, we went to the Protective League uh, looking to sh just shopping uh -huh. for a small black female kitten to go with our two black male cats. And then we met Bosco. Bosco uh, is blind in one eye. Mm -hmm. He's mostly white. He has some black on him, mm -hmm. but he is mostly white. He is uh, a muscular cat yes. and a full grown cat. He's three or four years old. Uh, we're not sure if he was abused in a previous uh, experience or whatever, but we are taking him and loving him mm -hmm. from right now at his forever home. And uh, he has adapted amazingly quickly <laughs> to yeah. living here. Uh -huh. uh, the the first twelve hours, he had a little bit of a hissing and and uh, feeling threatened and being a little bit off. Hissing and biting, and then, and clawing a little bit with no claws. Yeah, he doesn't have any. He had his claws removed, which is too bad. The other two have their claws, and but there, he's fully able. He's a large cat, and he is fully able to defend himself. Yeah. Um, and uh, we considered all of that with the with the people at the protective league. We let them know what we had and and how how would Bosco fit into that. They we were they were very helpful. Uh, but Bosco was not at all what we thought we were going to get. No. Uh, and we were just kind of shopping at the at the point of going in there. But when we met Bosco, we had to have him yeah. move in with us. Yeah, he's that. And uh, he's our he's our cat now, <laughs> and yeah. he, and we're his humans. And uh, so there's a picture of Bosco playing. Uh, on on our Facebook page and website, and uh, we are blessed to have him in our home. Yeah, two days uh, after Bosco showed up and was, you know, understandably antisocial and freaked out, and mm -hmm. what are all these other cats doing here? Even though he had, you know, cat companions at the, the last place. <laughs> two days later, he's he's climbing up on the couch, climbing up on your chest, and tapping you on the chin, going, "Pet me." Pet. pet me like oh geez pet me. oh geez okay yeah i was sitting there knitting we were watching what episode one of uh ray donovan ray donovan that's we were a, watching ray donovan that's a thanksgiving tradition in our house to uh <laughs> to watch ray donovan fire, watch we were watching fire. episode one of ray donovan and here comes bosco just deciding i'm gonna sit right on your knee and reach up to your chin and and say love me now yeah, yeah so so sweet and of course, the minute Bosco got here, he walked in the door and immediately demanded freshly he poured did. cat food, our fake sponsor. He knew. He knew. He knew. <laughs> he knew this was the house for it. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store direct, your pet will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured. Freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. Now Bosco approved. Bosco approves. Mm -hmm. And, of course, they're going to run around thinking that if they heard me sing that song, yeah. they run to the bowl, yeah. you know. <laughs> uh, I hope I we got a very loving uh, letter via our Patreon account this week from someone saying, you know, uh, I love your show. I really appreciate every episode and all the work you put into it. I feel as though you guys are getting a little bit stale. And I'm like, everybody's getting a little bit stale yeah. with Donald Trump. Yeah. You know, this is absolutely true. Well, and there was a there was a podcast I was listening to, won't say who, who said, what would you be talking about if it weren't for Donald Trump? And yeah. they, I've got a mile long list of things I would love to be absolutely. if it weren't for the fact absolutely. you were at a cold civil war with evil sadistic monsters who are bent on wrecking our country. That's kind of my top 10 priorities right now. It all involved getting them the hell out of power. So you're right. right. I'm, I'm stale. 
I'm tired of talking about it. I'm sure you're all tired of hearing about it. And you're going to keep hearing about it for about another year. Well, because we're in the bunker until until yeah. that's over. And then we've got more fighting to do. Yeah. And it will be different. Uh, hopefully it will be better. It'll be glorious, but little gal. Glorious. It, well, uh, you know, I, I think there is going to be just this em- enormous sigh of relief and fatigue uh, of w- not wanting to talk about politics and so forth. You know, we were going to do, we are releasing this weekend on our professional left account, uh, two episodes of science fiction university. Uh, one will definitely go up today and, uh, the other one, hopefully by Sunday, maybe earlier than that. Yep. Uh, we wanted to do that instead of our political podcast, Back in 2016, that was the plan because Hillary Clinton's administration was going to be boring. So boring. And <laughs> we didn't know what we were going to do. You know, we, we knew that we'd be talking about Fox News all day long and the lies they told about the Clinton administration. You know, it was going to be a repeat of that. But uh, we've already that seen that movie. We've seen that movie. Right. Yeah. We're going to keep our armor on and keep fighting for because it's whatever happens. Uh, whichever Democrat gets the nomination, whichever Democrat wins the election, knock wood, uh, we've got a lot of fighting ahead and a lot of uh, improving this country and making it live up to its ideals. Well, and, and we uh, have we have the roadmap. We know what they're going to do. That's the yeah, thing. We, we know do. What That's do. the stupid. Um, the, their playbook is open to us. Yeah. yeah. So we yeah. know that there will be a sudden massive increase in independent voters. I'm an independent. I'll put on, yeah, I'm an independent. They'll put on coffee hats or tea hats or wigs right. or whatever, and they'll declare themselves to be Minutemen or Watchmen or God knows what. And we'll be right back to where we were in 2009. Yeah. Uh, but we know it's coming. That's the thing. We can plan for it. We can, if we focus our energy and don't take our off the ball and don't let the precursor of these people get away with doing that, right. we can keep them in the box they've created for themselves and watch them collapse. And that's that's the great hope. That if you just take away the center from them, take away their validators in the media, the people in the media who say, well, it really is both sides. Well, this is a whole new political movement called the Tea Party. Yes, Trump, that was Trumpism. This is coffee party. (laughs) If you take away those people from the middle, then the middle has to choose between, oh, the Donald Trump fascist party and the Democrats who are trying to clean up from the Donald Trump fascist party. Remove from them an excuse to pretend that both sides are the same. And things will change much faster than you will ever believe. As I wrote in the summer of 2016, (laughs) Donald, don't you dare call it Trumpism. Donald Trump received more Republican primary votes than any other candidate in history. And those voters did not fall off a truck or magically sprout from a, you know, a beanstalk and become Trump voters. They were Republicans for years and v- elections and decades, and they voted for Trump. They yep. were th- He is a Republican candidate from the Republican Party. So uh, never forget that. Burn the lifeboats and uh, no rebranding for Republicans who are utterly complicit in everything that Donald Trump has done. In the meanwhile, you can visit Bosco at our Facebook page or website. Yes, you can. And you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, or you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. December 1st is this week. If you get paid the first of the month, uh, we don't get paid unless you contribute to the podcast. So we appreciate that so much. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. We have PayPal, postal address information, Patreon, buy me a coffee, all kinds of ways to support the show at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media and thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties are deeply grateful to have another member of their team. Yay, Bosco! Yay, Bosco! Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. 
Let's think of our life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2019-2020, DGBG Productions.